Alright, this is my third video for OpenGL using MinGW and Eclipse. And I've recently tried switching over from Cam Studio to Screen Recorder Gold, I believe is what this program's called. Anyway, so we'll see how it works out. Now, I'm going to be kind of rushing forward because I've made this video three or four times and I just want to get it made, help everybody out, and so moving forward. So when we were last here we had just created GLFW init and built the program showing that our link and uh, library link and include settings were all correct. I have added the glue header here. don't think I had that uh, added last time. So I'm going to go ahead and not do normally. You would want to do some verification to make sure that this started up correctly, but I'm not going to do that. Alright, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to actually try and specify which version of OpenGL we want to use with GLFW, and we do this through what's called a window hint. And there are two kinds of hints. There are hard hints and there are soft hints. And the difference between the two is a soft hint. If you don't get what you uh, ask for, it will default it. But if you, like this one is a hard hint. So if this version is not available, it will fail. Now normally the failure would be recorded through a callback but I'm not going to set that callback because right now I just want to show how to get something on the screen. I'm going to be using uh, old OpenGL code so this is the way we used to do it All right, so now we've requested that we get the 3.1 version of the API, and then we're going to create our window. Now, for those of you with a Windows background who know how to make one from scratch, it is an arduous, time-consuming process where you have to create a class, you have to attach a Windows handler callback to that class, then you have to register the class with the system, there are a whole bunch of attributes uh, you can set up for style and such and it is a real pain with GLFW it's all very much simplified and from what I understand you can actually run this code across multiple you can compile this code on multiple operating systems and it will work the same so we're going to request a window 640 by 480 give it its caption and these two parameters right here are actually for specifying monitor hardware information now we're not interested in that right now I've done some reading the documentation is actually pretty cool I get the impression you can do some neat stuff with that but I'm going to go ahead and skip forward. GLF, oh. W window. So this will generate. This will. Ah. This will give us a window. And it's going. We can reference it through this pointer win. Alright. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and make this context the current context. OpenGL is very state machine so by making this context current everything that we we do hereafter will be applied to this excuse me to this context and this is kinda cool so like if you were doing multiple monitors or you wanted multiple GL contexts you would make sure you select whichever one you want to work with at a different time and so we've made our context current now I'm gonna go ahead and initialize glue although since I'm doing old style 
OpenGL, glue is not really going to be useful to us. Now, glue, I mentioned in one of my previous videos, but I'll go ahead and repeat, is the OpenGL extension Wrangler library. And what it does is it associates a bunch of functions with it creates pointers from the local function the local functions to the hardware because the hardware the different manufacturers have those functions in different places and if we didn't have something like glue we would have to know the exact address of those various functions which would be a pain we would have to customize our code for every different manufacturer so glue actually simplifies that by giving us a API between us and them. All right, so moving forward. So we're going to go ahead and start to set up our OpenGL view code. Now, the matrix mode specifies which matrix you want to work with. There are a couple of different matrices and we're going to be working with the projection matrix and this is the one that applies the math to our final view so if we were going to do perspective we would have to apply it to this matrix now we're just going to do orthographic projection so it's going to be pretty simple and geo load identity actually just loads the identity matrix and the identity matrix for everybody who hasn't taken um, linear algebra is the matrix equivalent of one. So you multiply the identity matrix oops, by a matrix, you'll get the original matrix back. So this is in essence initializing this so it'll have no effect on any matrix. So go ahead and GL ortho and this is going to set us up an orthographic matrix. So this will change the projection matrix for orthographic view. And so what we're going to do is we're going to set the left is going to be minus 20, the right side of the screen is going to be 20, the bottom is going to be minus 20, and the top is going to be 20 and this is these last two are actually our z coordinates now being an orthographic projection there's going to be absolutely no sense of distance so things are going to be pretty much flat on the screen if they come towards you they're not going to change they go away they're not going to change and this more like establishes a clipping plane at this point so next we're going to sell, set our gl viewport and what this guy does is he helps set up the rest of the math. So we're going to have our width and our height. And that's going to set up some of the math in the background so that our transformations are correct. So, all right. Now we're going to get into our what some people call the game loop. So I recently saw a lecture on the difference between game programming and application programming. I am by trade an application developer and I had never thought of this before but he said the biggest difference is when you're doing um, game and graphics development you think in terms of your game loop. So each iteration of this loop represents a single frame drawn. And I'm going to go ahead and skip ahead here and just say handle our cleanup code. So this is going to destroy the window. Oops. And this is going to clean up GLFW from our program. And this is where we actually start to do our drawing. So since we're going to be actually working with our drawing vertices, we're going to set the GL matrix mode to GL model view. Now, we're not going to be doing any kind of transformation like rotation or 
movement or anything so this is really not important but I felt it was worth mentioning so again we're switching our state machine so our active matrix is the model view matrix and until I'm getting tired All right so that initializes the model view matrix so if this matrix is multiplied by anything it will have no effect on it now I'm going to add this just for the sake of it GLFW uh, one of the really nice things that it does is it also handles mouse events keyboard events and joystick events and so this will actually call the associated callbacks so you can have your mouse handler and your keyboard handlers as separate functions to change states or react to those changes. This program, we're just drawing something, so just putting it in there for the sake of it. Alright, so GeoClearColor will represent the color that the screen will be when everything's been cleaned out. And I actually selected a color here uh, just for the sake of being different. Normally I would do white or black, but just to be different. All right, so this is R, G, B, and alpha. The alpha is could be a couple of different things, but we're not going to use it. We're just thinking R, G, B. All right, so now we're going to clear out the screen because this is going to represent us starting our new frame. All right. <coughs> so this is going to clear our screen and wipe it with the color that we selected right here. All right, so we're going to start our GL begin. This again is the old style. So this sets the state as we are about to draw something and the parameter dictates how all the following vertices are going to be handled. So you could put in GL triangles. It'll take it in groups of three and tie them together to, to draw triangles. I'm going to go ahead. There are actually a whole plethora of these, but I'm going to go ahead and do quads because everybody always does triangles and I thought maybe I'd just be a little bit different. So, first thing you want to do is select a color here. 3F and we'll start with red. And don't forget the F because otherwise you're going to get an implicit conversion from double to float. Probably not much of a performance hit, but it's just good practice. Alright, so I have these all written down off to the side here, so I can go ahead and just power through it. So, and what's going to happen is these colors are going to be applied to each vertice. And in modern programming, we would actually have a shader library for doing this work. And we will be doing that just a little bit later after I do a video on transformations and rotations. So, two minus. And I'm just going to go ahead and leave the color 
So we'll get it kind of a lopsided quad, but I don't think it matters. And because we've got our GL quad set, it will automatically close all these vertices. So the last thing we need to do is swap buffers. As part of a performance increase, what's, got, what's happening is when it's drawing the next frame, it's uh, drawing it in memory. So you don't actually get to see it being drawn. And when you call this command, it'll actually put the, the new rendered frame over the old one. And swap buffers. All right, and I'm going to build and nothing happens. This is important. This is not Visual Studios. If you build, it doesn't save the file, so your changes won't get applied. I have actually suffered a lot for this behavior difference, so I try and stress it every chance I get. Make sure you hit save every time you make a change. If you're making changes and you notice there's no effect on your output, verify that you met, you've saved. So. All right, everything's built correctly. We're going to run it. And lo and behold, we've made a rectangle, which is not what we originally asked for because we gave it perfectly uh, symmetrical coordinates. The reason for this is because we have 640 by 480. So there's actually a ratio between the width and the height but we didn't account for that when we did our orthographic. So this side represents minus 20 in the coordinates. This side is positive 20. The bottom is minus 20. The top is positive 20 with origin in the center. So we can apply a ratio of the width to the height, but just for the sake of illustration, I'm going to go ahead and just make this a square. And I'm going to update the viewport. And I'm going to save it. And I'm going to run it. And as you can see, our square is now a square. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it here and hope that this new uh, screen capture software did its job. I apologize if I seem a little out of it. This is the fourth time I've tried to make this video and it's grown quite late. So I might remake it at a later time so I sound less insane. But this is the basics. Uh, this shows that our, our setup is good. If we were going to do this for real, we would need to verify that this guy did not return a failure. This guy did not return a failure. Put in a call, an error callback to GLFW. But we will do that in the future. But next video, I'm actually going to rotate this guy and um, try and do a little bit of an explanation on the matrix math. Because I think it's kind of important to have a basic understanding of what's going on. Anyway, comments are welcome. Feel free to correct me if I did everything wrong. I am an amateur at uh, OpenGL, just learning. Have a good night.